perfect. I'm just waiting on notification. And boom. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning into a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast this evening. We have an incredible guest with us tonight, one who's going to give us some amazing information as well as inspiration. And that is none other than Professor Malik Shabazz uh, or Malik Shabazz on his tremendous life journey and what is what exactly is the martial science of street allergy jujitsu? How are you doing today, sir? Great, and thank you for having me on. I appreciate that wholeheartedly. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming on. Um, now, the first question that we have for all of our guests that who want to know, how did you get into the arts? My art journey began in 1968. I was in elementary school. I had two older brothers that uh, transitioned now but they were training. And um, so I was sort of their uki unbeknown to me at the time. You know, I, I was always the one that had grabbed me, throw, you know, grabbed me, throw a punch at me. And uh, then I had a friend of mine that was in my class. He was a uh, Chinese gentleman uh, and he was doing Kung Fu at the time. And uh, there was a scrap in our schoolyard. Two guys had jumped on him and I seen him do some work. And the rest is history because he lived in he uh his family they owned the Chinese uh, starch cleaners, and uh, they lived in the neighborhood. So uh, I was always around him and around the family somewhat. So that's how I started my my journey into the martial way. Hmm. Okay, great. Yes, sir. And my sister Naima is in the greetings and thank you, Naima, for watching. Thank everyone who teams to like, share, subscribe. We can't wait to put this on YouTube. Yes, sir. Now, how does one? Um, elevate in your in your system in your martial arts system. Okay, what I did now in my where I'm at in my journey in the martial way, I've eliminated the belt system and the geese and stuff, and I'm just strictly into first and foremost uh health. So I advocate health and and um, longevity. That's number one. I try to eliminate some of the injuries that I've sustained through the years of training and some of the a punishment that I've done, you know, in terms of falling and jumping off desks and falling on concrete. And uh, it had uh, paid dividends on my body later on as I mature chronologically. So some of those things that I've experienced, I've eliminated them so that other people doesn't have to experience the, the difficulties that I've done in my life through falling and rolling on concrete on a regular basis. The body is not uh, made for that and it's not conducive to the body. And eventually, your body will break down and start to talk to you. So my thing in terms of doing the free side falls on the concrete and stuff, it, it would take punishment on your body and just lie dormant and then one day just start to wake up. <laughs> and, and so I changed a lot of things in my uh, jujitsu. So in terms of like getting from one level to another i test everybody i don't again i don't wear geese i don't wear belts but i do hand them out as an incentive to everybody so they can know that they're they're progressing but i don't wear geese and belts unless there's a, a form that i have to attend and it requires that but for me right now in the street no one really cares so i'm thinking my you know, right now I'm I'm looking through a different lens, so to speak. So my 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 things has changed a little bit in the way I do things, in the way I say things, the way I approach things, and the way I teach. Okay, great. Yes, sir. And where can we uh, sign up and enroll in your system? Well, I'm on uh, streetology2010 at gmail.com. Anybody can reach me at that email. And I'm also on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, you know, you can find me on Street Al Jiu Jitsu or Malik Shabazz at 2010. Yes, sir. Now I, I was blessed to see you uh, in person do some of your weapon exercises, some of your snatching of the eyes, of the mouth. I mean, just some some, some serious uh, combat techniques. And I was very impressed to Thank see you. As, as someone who's been in, um, the arts my whole life but been in fights as well to yes, see sir. the realism of your fights how how are you able to 
teach the realistic techniques in your in your system? Okay. One of the things that I could point out in terms of the way I teach, and I had a gentleman that I that will remain nameless. I was in North Carolina quite a few years ago, and uh, one of his students was hosting a seminar, and they allowed me to participate. And when I finished, the the grandmaster that was there said to me, "You know, Shabazz, if if I taught like you, I wouldn't have any students." And we giggled amongst each other. But I'm saying that to say that because I don't have an overhead in terms of paying rent and a light bill, I can teach differently. And one of the things that I like about the way I'm instructing people now is that, you know, coming up in a class, in a class setting, in a dojo, you know, you can have 10 people, 20, 30, et cetera. And everybody has to follow that form, that format. What I do now, if I have a couple of people that I'm training, no more than maybe seven people at a time, but I like two and three more so. And what I do is that every single person as an individual gets something different because one person might be tall, one might be short, one might be skinny, one might be chubby, et cetera. We all move different. And I, I, I am attentive to each and every individual. And when they leave out of my training uh, class or, or the, the duration of my training, everybody leaves out with something particular to them. And so again, you know, my things has changed in terms of like the way I teach. My um, conditioning level, for instance, as you as you witness, a lot of people might think that that was 1964, right? But in order to go forward, sometimes you must not sometimes. In order to go forward, you must know what you came from, right? Yes, and sir. so the arts back in the days, from what I've read and from the little bit of time that I've experienced, 55 uninterrupted years of training. I realized that there's some things from the past that we can still bring forward, you know, and, and my, my principle is just because something works doesn't mean it can't be improved. Mm. So some of the things that I do that I've learned, I put a different spin on it. And the reason, I, reason why I've done that is because again, the individual, Everybody can't do the same thing that the other person might do. And I and I realized that I get more happiness out of seeing people that can in, that can digest the stuff that I offer to them individually as opposed to a group. Now, what I usually tell them is that I teach the pillars and the way you build your house is your business business but you got to have the pillars otherwise the house will fall right mm -hmm. so that's what that's where my focus is my focus first and foremost theology just is holistic so i want to keep you healthy and if i can i want to avoid injuries and so again the way i had hip replacements from all of that falling and getting thrown and throwing people some of the things I've eliminated because I don't want to pass that on to the next individual because that's not a badge of honor. And just because I probably was taught a certain way doesn't mean that I have to keep on teaching that same way if I personally have been now in a, in a, a good place where I'm an adult and I can teach the way I choose to teach. Nothing against the way I was taught. But again, just because something works doesn't mean it can't be improved. So I changed up a lot of things and I'm very straightforward and short in terms of like, instead of, if you condition, if I take all of my people and I put them through conditioning, if I, I don't have to hit you seven times to get, to get, to stop you. In other words, if I, if I'm in condition and I know how to hit you, I know how to angle, I mean, know how to do my hand placement, my body alignment. I know how to breathe properly. Those combinations together are destructive. So the whole thing about me is in order to get home at night, when the person in the street attack you, you have to be at a point of training realistically where you can take your violence up to a level that supersedes the person that's coming at you in a violent manner. Because the only way that you're gonna go home at night, the only way that you're gonna survive is you gotta be vicious and destructive in what you do. Now, I'm a joster. I like to crack jokes when I'm training, you know, in between the oohs and the ahs, right? I'll crack a joke because it needs to be fun and, and you know, we're human. 
But when it comes time to uh, get in a confrontation or and you can't avoid it, it's my responsibility to teach you properly. I, I take I take full responsibility in what it is that I'm teaching you to know that if you should get home at night, unless you're not doing your homework. But I'm a I'm a less is, is more principal individual. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. And you have people who are watching who've never watched before. And so all around the country, thank you all for who are showing love for your first time. Also, Miriam says peace. Also, Brother Reginald, um, um, uh, Sensei James, uh, uh, prof uh, Professor James. A lot of professors going on, a lot of senseis, a lot of yes, this is in rolling out. Uh, Kwase Asante says streetologist roar. A lot of people saying us. A lot of people saying Ashe, clap. Great. Yes, sir. Okay, now wonderful. My, now my next thing I want to ask you: What about sparring? Uh, is is it, how how do you suggest that people spar without getting hurt or but still keeping realism? What are your suggestions on that? I, I love sparring, and the thing about it, even though it's sports oriented, I think spar sparring short uh, shapes up your your reflexes, and it gives you um, it, it lets you know about your own inner fears, right? You. When you spawn against somebody that you don't know, it, it, it makes you a little jittery because you don't know what to expect. This is my experience anyway. I'm just talking about myself. You know, coming up through the uh, the bare knuckle fights that I've had, coming up through the sparring, I was grand champion in quite a few tournaments. But prior to even going there, I lost a lot of fights. I mm. lost a lot of uh, tournament events. So it, it was, um, and, and every time I lost, let me let me let me shoot back a little bit. I either won or I learned. Mm, so a mm. lot of times that I learned things, I went back and I sharpened those tools and I sharpened those tools. And after a while, those tools became razor sharp. So I I learned how to adapt in my sparring. Sparring could take your reflexes to another level, and it helps you in the street. Sparring in a tournament and street scuffs is totally two different things, but keeping yourself, your reflexes sharp and your, your timing, it sparring definitely helps. So one of the things that Kaijo Little John had us doing coming up in the dojo, he had us with our back on the wall and sometimes he tied our ankles up. The person that I'm attacking or vice versa, our ankles are tied. So you can't run back. <laughs> and that kind of put a different type of spin on the spawn because a lot of people are clo uh, close up. They, they need that space because it's uncomfortable. But I tell I tell the brothers and sisters, because there's, there's no male or female, just this geek, there's just training. And uh, you got to be able to get comfortable being uncomfortable because that's the way it's going to be in the street. Okay, great. Yes, sir. Now, what about women? In your style of martial arts, what, what, where, where does it, how does that fall in your training? Is that do you only train men or do you train women and children? I, I, treat, I, I train women, but I train women in terms of street a little different. Now I I give I do the conditioning with women as well as I do with the men. First and foremost, I'm I'm the example to all of that. I don't ask anyone to do anything that I wouldn't do or can't do. So the women get trained in the same similar fashion, right? But when it comes to uh, for instance, excuse me, instead of teaching the women to apply a lot, I teach them how to escape a grab. So I don't believe that the situation is always warranted to put a for a woman to put a man in a lock, right? I think that is more important for a woman to be able to break the grasp that a man has and strike at certain targets that will incapacitate anyone, whether they're under the influence or they didn't take their pill because they have some mental issues. If you touch, if a woman touch a man in the retina and, and goes across the eye, it's a good possibility she could cut the retina. That's not something that somebody's going to chase you down in the street and, and try to re-grab you, right? If you go to the inner gate, we call the spleen number six, right? That's down near the ankle. That's one of the 12 meridians of the body, right? If a woman attacks that or go to spleen 10 inside of the leg and, and attack it with her shoes on, it, it'll definitely get a reaction. And then you run down the street and you yell, fire, fire. Because everybody else, if you say, I'm being attacked, help. They just going to pull out their cameras and take pictures. Mm. So 
my 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 uh observation of the way I see the street confrontation, I'm looking through a different type of lens, if you will. So I don't I'm not uh I'm not one with the locks and, and trying to a woman trying to throw somebody. I call it strike and flight, street alley jiu-jitsu strike and flight. And it's all about avoidance, right? The, the the pinnacle of training, in my perspective, is avoidance. If you could avoid getting into the situation, man, you won a thousand battles, mm -hmm. right? The very last thing that you want to do, be it male or female, is to have to get into a scuff, right? Because when you train with me in my little secluded place, I'm going to test your heart. You're going to either leave out questioning yourself or you're going to say, Sensei, that was great. But I'm, I'm going to put, I'm going to, you won't know if your art really worked if you've never been in a scrap, right? And so I don't advocate people to go out in the street and start a fight because you're going to get shot these days, right? But I'm going to put you underneath the pressure so bad that you're going to really uh, question either your inabilities or your abilities. Mm -hmm. so when I move around with my guys or I move around with the girls and we strapped up on the ankles and one of them hit me in my mouth, I say thank you. And if I... You know, because I don't go back at them like you hit me in my mouth. I'm sensing, nah, man, I'm so human and down to the ground that if you hit me in my mouth, I'm gonna say thank you because in the street they're gonna hit me in my mouth, right? So mm. it just shows that anybody can be touched, but can you be touched and continue to continue on? That's the mm. thing. So that's where the conditioning part comes in, you know. The medicine ball, the knuckle push-ups, the iron body man contact. Uh, you know, um, doing pull-ups. I'm, I'm a personal trainer, experienced personal trainer. And what I don't go to the gym to, to lift weights. I go to the gym to weight train. It's a huge difference, right? And and first and foremost, just going to the gym is talking about, um, I'm talking about the bone density. As we mature chronologically, our bone density changes. But if you went to the gym and you know how to weight train properly, you can help continue to have that bone density. So I'm doing things from a health perspective, 1000%. Getting into a scrap, locking somebody up, having to do a throw, that's the last of what I'm doing. Okay, great. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You teach me a <laughs> hard professor. And uh, Sister Tracy says, uh, that's a whole word right there, learning to get comfortable, being uncomfortable, good point, exactly. That's a beautiful uh, way to look at life, the spiritual attacks that come our way too. Excellent. And people are showing love all across the country. My sister Miriam, people, everyone's showing love. And I can't wait to put this on YouTube. Please let us know what city you are watching. So once again, Professor, where can we uh, sign up for your class? And where can, um, do you have any clips or videos uh, on YouTube or things that we can subscribe yes, to? Yes, I, I have some clips on YouTube. I don't like putting out a whole lot of, I don't put up any applications. And what I mean is I don't teach techniques. I teach applications to a technique. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times there's some things that we see, uh, let's say a technique, for instance. But in between the techniques, we we missing something, right? So I don't want anybody to be in a box somewhat. I want you to be able to move freely for yourself. So I don't teach techniques. I teach applications. And what I mean by applications, I teach angles. I teach pressure points. I call it uh, shutting down the, the circuit system, right? Because the brain is, is, you know, instead of uh, trying to hit somebody in a muscle, I'd rather you hit the nerve. The nerve will shut the muscle down. Uh, I'm into the condition of the body. And um, I just, again, I, I can't overemphasize the health and my passion in training. Anybody that trained with me, whether it's recent or in the past, knows my energy, right? And, and I'm always putting myself through the test before I put you through the test. So I can be reached at streetology2010 at gmail.com. I'm on uh, Facebook. I'm on, uh, you could, I have a couple of clips on uh, YouTube, but it's not, it's not techniques. I'm not going to show applications. If you want to see uh, my applications, you have to feel them. That's that's the way I do things. But you'll see clips of me doing a little bit of condition with the, with the uh, both male and females, and we do a little stick work. Street jitsu is weapon based, right? And the reason why we're weapon based is because weapons sharpen the empty hand. 
and if people in the street are mostly attacking with weapons. So if a person, if you stopped at a red light and somebody pulls out a stick and they're coming back to attack you and you have a stick, instead of attacking stick to stick, my philosophy, my, my principle is this is the weapon, right? The stick is a tool. So the, the tool can't do anything without the weapon, which is the person's thoughts and, and mindset and the hands that's controlling the tools. So in street jitsu, if you attack us, we attack the attack. The Philippines call it defanging the snake. We call it attacking the attack. So if you punch at me, I'm going to break your fist. I'm going to destroy that arm. If you pull out a knife, I'm going to destroy the the. Uh, the weapon with the tool in it. I'm not going to worry about, you know, deflecting or blocking your punch because in street out jitsu we don't block. We only deflect and or redirect. And my principle with that is that if we're gifted to be 70, 80 years of age and a, a, a 16 year old run up on you, you're not going to meet him speed for speed, strength for strength, et cetera, because those things are going to diminish as we mature chronologically. It's just a fact. But there's some things you can keep, keep 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 with you, your flow of movement, your applications, you know, and uh, deflections and or redirections. If you the shoulder the shoulder joint, we call it the uh, hinge. If you put a person's arm straight out and you in front of them and you tell them don't let me move, you can't stop me from moving it because the the, the joint itself you can't stop the joint from movement so i always emphasize the deflection and or redirection because it's a lot more damaging when you're destructive and you know where to touch and how to touch mm, mm, mm. yes sir excellent we want to thank you again professor we have a few more questions for you uh, we have a quick 60 second commercial break for yes, all of the sponsors of the people's podcast i want to thank everyone who continues to like share and subscribe to the people's podcast i want to thank if you are my brother's street premiere, uh, he has a 4K camera and a drone. He does television and film editing. Please reach out to him if you need any of those services. My sister Miriam, ABC I Love Me, children's book and coloring book, and now Spanish book, all three available on, on amazon.com. My sister Naima, Stay On Point Dance Academy, LLC. She teaches ballet virtually to young girls all across the country, right here in the studios of Atlanta, Georgia. Rock Communications, if you are working on a book, and you need copy editing, project management, content development, or media relations, please reach out to Rock Communications. Also, Student Minister Robert L. Muhammad, conflict mediation, squashing the beefs throughout the Southwest region. He does a phenomenal job. His wife is a foodie of Muhammad, giving birth to a God in the science of child rearing. Please make sure you get out and uh, make sure you get her copy of her book. Fashion Guides, Urban Streetwear for Men and Boys, 314-329-6029. He'll keep you dressed in the best of fashion. Um, Brother Kenneth, bow tie maker extraordinaire. He'll ship you bow ties anywhere across the nation. Um, Asiac Minds, she teaches STEM virtually to young kings and queens all across the country. Please sign up for AsiaticMinds.com. So the Sherry does a great job, AsiaticMinds.com. Taj Hollywood, Chemistry 6 episode. Taj Hollywood, new television series out on YouTube. Make sure you support him. Keep it hood, helping others overcome depression. That's also by Taj Hollywood. Also, Brother uh, Aaron, Irredeemable. Okay, here we go. Um, elevated places, stress management, real estate, credit, and uh, repair and restoration. His Respect for Life Center. They do personal wellness, philosophy, emotional, emotional and mental, spiritual wellness. Two two nine three four four one four seven four. Also, Dr. Henry Carter's King Henry Turkey Legs right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Brother Rashad Muhammad, COVID-19 Disinfecting Cleaning Services out of Chicago. My father's book, The Soldier in the Movement of Christ, abdulsharif.com. And last but not least, my two books, Cleopatra, which is a children's book, and No Father, No Excuse, both of which are, is a, are available on Amazon. Thank everyone who continues to like, share, and support. My next question for you, sir, will you ever write a book about your personal life? In the process now. <laughs> Long and time here. putting together, because every time I, I think I'm about it, about finished, I, I add some more stuff to it. <laughs> okay, great. Yes, sir. Now, what about you and uh, C. Joe Mutaka Bear? How did you all have a connection? Man, I, that's my big brother, first and foremost. Shout out to you. I also like to, before I forget, I like, before I get beat up, I want to give a shout out to my teacher, Kaja Lou John Davis, uh, Kashinda Lamar Thornton as well. And and one of my uh, twin brother, my twin brother, 
Louis Morales, Hanchi. Thank you so much, Hanchi. Mm. Hey, um, I'm sorry, what was the question? Yes, sir. You and CJ Mutaka Bear, I've, I've interviewed him before. How did you all connect? Yeah, so that's my big brother. We scrapped against each other. Uh, this was, I think the first time he and I fought was in uh, the late great Baba Fred Hamilton's tournament. This was in 19, I would say 19, maybe 80, 81. 83 something like that mm -hmm. I, I still have my i still have the trophy it was called the battle of the zodiacs and uh each person that won their particular zodiac sign that that won first place had to meet up in the middle and we had the grand champion and uh i fought uh c joe bear that was our, our first one i believe mm -hmm. and uh like i said i don't i don't i either win or i learn so i learned <laughs> I got so much respect and love for the, for my big brother, you know. He, he's just he's just a gentle giant, you know. Yes. Yes, and sir. She's a beautiful sister as well. Absolutely, she is. Yes, yes. sir. Now, I also wanted to ask you, in in when you have multiple styles of martial science, what if I'm a boxer? Do I and I come to your training? How do you do you help me with the boxing or do you? Do you focus on my legs? Like how do you, if somebody's a wrestler, when all these people come to your style, how do people come, how do you address each person's individual talent or skill set? If, 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 if a boxer came to me, I would I would enhance his boxing for the street. Mm. So boxing is a sport, but boxing is, is all, you know, one thing about boxers, they know how to take punches and they know how to give punches. So they're good at exchanging. So they already got that down. So now what I would do is show how to destroy a punch when the when the boxer in the street or somebody's throwing a haymaker, destroy it. And that's what the limbs are for. We got elbows, we got headbutts, we even got shoulder strikes, we got knee strikes, we got inner gate. I was explaining earlier, spleen six. Where I was taught how to sweep with the flat of your foot, now I hit you with the bone of the ankle. So you're gonna still uh, uh, feel the, the reap or the sweep, so to speak, but I'm gonna put a little bit of sauce in there with it, right? So if a boxer me again i'm struck with what he had if it's to me sure i'm kenna mutai kenna mutai is a philippine artist, eye gorging and biting so i'm gonna enhance whatever it is that you already have and put it to another level that's what i love to do i always tell my student i know I, I don't own anyone so if somebody one of the people that's training with me by the way i don't call them students i call them training partners because I, I always see something that they do that I could pick up on and I share it. You know, that's just me. But um, I'm always trying to enhance whatever it is that you have and take it to another level. It's always good to, to learn other things. But if you got a skill level, let's sharpen it up. In the meantime, you could be working on some other things. But let's make what you have to perfection if, there's a, if, you, can, if you can get there. Beautiful. Yes, sir. It's the song is the of greetings as well. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, everyone who continues to like, share, subscribe. So Tracy, congratulations. Thank everyone. Um, my next question for you, sir, is people who um, come with different weapons, how, they come to you. How do you how do you assist with the weapon training? Well, my my weapons of choice, again, is always this and this. The, other, the rest is just tools. If I'm familiar with the tools, then I'll, I'll, I can enhance them. If I'm not, I'm honest. If I don't know, I say, I don't, I don't know nothing about that, brother. So you can either let me go to somebody that can, or I can direct you in the right path. But I'm, I'm never one of them that if I, if I don't know, I'm going to make something up. I'm, I'm crystal clear. I'm, I'm really transparent. What you see is what you get. But if somebody came to me with a tool that I, I wasn't familiar with, I'll let them know. Now, if they're still interested, I'm sure I can, I can give them with something. Yeah. Excellent. Yes, sir. And what type of uh, music do you like to listen to, Professor? I'm a jazz. I'm a jazz man. I'm a percussionist as well. Mm, mm, yeah. mm. I, I love jazz, you know, old hip hop. I'm, I love some old hip hop, something that I can I can relate and understand what they're saying. <laughs> OK, yes, sir. Excellent. And Sister Mary is showing uh, sends a greeting saying good teacher. Uh, thank you for watching, Sister Mary. Thank everybody who's showing love all across the country. Yes, sir. My um my last question is one more time. I want to make sure everyone who's watching, because once we put this on YouTube, we want everybody to see. Yes, we, we find you on Instagram, Facebook under the name of Street Allergy Jiu Jitsu or under. You find me under Malik Shabazz 2010. 
And or if you go to Facebook, Street Al Jitsu. If you go to um, my Twitter, is is Malik Shabazz at 2010 as well. Okay, great. And yes, if you want to hit me, excuse me, I'm sorry. If you want to hit me on the email, it's streetology2010 at gmail.com. Excellent. Yes, sir. All right. Boom. And Clyde Hunt says, us, uh, streetology yeah. family. Okay, great. Ashe, Ashe, all the great stuff. All right, listen, my next question for you, sir, is um, the seminar that I went to with uh, CJ Mutaka Bear, do you ever do uh, seminars? And if so, how do we sign up? Like, do we just keep up with you on social media or do you it's like an annual thing where you do something in person well you know since i i used to do them like every every year a couple of times every year but since the since the virus i haven't really been out there like that other in fact the one with cjo uh big brother mataka bear that was that was the first time i've been out in years mm -hmm. but you know if someone wants to anything from me, they can reach out to me uh, on on a private note, and we can do something. But I'm looking to do something uh, coming up next year. But again, you know, because I'm different, not better, but I'm different in my in the way I do things. I might be uh, a person that might be. Uh, I want to find the right words because I I don't. Not everything works in the street and you can't do everything on a person. So there's some things that I don't do and I don't I don't sign off on. Um, I'm like raw, straight to the point. You know, I've been some places that that you'll read about that I had to put, you know, put put things to the test. And it makes you find out a lot about which who you are and what your capabilities are. And so I know for a fact that there's so much that is out here that looks really good, but I'm going to coin, a, I didn't coin this phrase, but I'm going to use it right now, that people are, ro are romancing violence. And there's nothing pretty about violence and war, nothing. So when I see a lot of stuff that looks like this and, you know, it, it, it's real nice and pretty, I don't subscribe to that because I know what the other underground current is like. So I respect them, you know, as, as uh, their character and who they are and the things that they do, but I don't sign off on it. And so because of that reason, you know, I'm probably like that person that's out on the outside, you know, because the only person that, that that's gonna be thrown is the person that allows themselves to be thrown, you know? <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm just gonna stop there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want to thank you, uh, Professor, for your philosophy and your theory. And I'm just bearing witness to everyone who's watching. Anybody who's watching, they know Josh is always obsessed with fighting and been that way since I was a child. When I saw your presentation, I said, it's official. It's official. <laughs> thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, no, it's official now. It's official. I, I know I know what's real. I said, that's official. <laughs> That'll work. That'll work. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Yes, sir. And on the People's Podcast on YouTube, we have a different um, playlist. And we're going to add this to the martial arts playlist where we've interviewed some martial arts, martial arts, martial science, yes, sir. karate yeah. legends. And we want to add this to the uh, the plethora of interviews that I've been able to do. This means a lot to me. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. Everyone, I hope that, you know, we all have some, some form of knowledge and doing some type of training in self-defense to protect ourselves and our families. Um, yes, sir. Street Alley Jiu Jitsu is official, and um, we want to make sure that we continue to pro propagate that and promote that amongst us in the community. So, we want to thank everybody. People are showing love. Uh, uh, Jamila Theus is very true, and Kwasi Asante says his science is real. That's a fact. That's a fact. All right, great. Well, I want to thank everyone. This is Joshua Leonard Muhammad signing off for the People's Podcast. Thank you all for watching. Brother, let me just say before we hang up, just, you know, thank you for allowing me again. And, and it's, it'll be such an honor to be among some of the other greats, you know, that are out there. You know, I, I really appreciate this. And I just want to give a shout out to my daughters, Zakia and Aisha. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. OK, well, speaking of, OK, well, now I know you have daughters. As someone who is a, a martial, you know, martial artist and fighter, uh, I interviewed. Um, whose daughters did I interview? OK, so. Like remember I said, like four months ago, I interviewed um, Moses Powell's daughters. Yes. And and you know, on his anniversary, we were talking about what it's like having a father who does, you know, who's a fighter, who's a killer. You know what I'm saying? Walking right yes. What is that like? Uh, knowing that you have a daughters and you have to protect them. What, how did that enhance your style? 
man, you know, every single night, my daughters are grown, and every single night, when they get in or wherever they come from, they gotta tag me, you know. <laughs> so they let, so I know that they, I know they grown, but you still my baby. So they tag yes, sir, me. Yes, sir. every single night, every single day. We we in contact, and every single day that I, I reach out, I talk to them and watch their surroundings, cause wolves travel in packs, you know. And so yeah, my daughters, they they uh they know about their dad, you know, but they don't see that part, you know. We all I'm a jokester, so they always see the clown part of their father, you know. But if uh if ever they need some advice in that respect, you know, then I turn the switch. Beautiful, great, yes, sir. Well, th once again, thank you all. Thank you again. Uh, Terry Neal says he is a great teacher. And thank everyone for watching. Thank all you. Right. Thank you all. Bye. Bye.